amongst an arsenal of options available to improve your performance in combat, potions are one of the strongest options for any player to use, and there's a ton of them, and poisons that go with a combination of builds, playstyles, food consumables, drink consumables, Munda stones, and so much more in the Elder Scrolls Online. But let's keep things simple for this video. Now, while there is a variety of player-crafted potions available for consumption and purchase for anyone who plays ESO, in this video specifically, we'll be going over the top 5 most useful or most used potions in the Elder Scrolls Online that often fit in with a lot of people's builds and playstyles within a myriad of scenarios and group contexts in no particular order. I won't be going over how to make these potions, as oftentimes there are cheaper or more expensive ingredients you can find to achieve the same kinds of potions, and with new ingredients sometimes being added to the game by the developers, things can change. I would highly recommend checking out UESP's potion charts to see which ingredients you need for what in the meantime until we can provide our own database through ESO University's website. First up is your basic weapon and spell power potion. This is a step up from the potions you can find from killing bosses or mobs in overland or dungeon content, often referred to as trash potions by many players. The weapon and spell power potions in contrast to trash pots, however, offer not just stamina or magicka back in addition to magicka and stamina recovery in the form of major endurance or intellect, but also spell and weapon damage in the form of major sorcery or major brutality and also spell and weapon critical rating in the form of major prophecy and major savagery depending on which kind of potion you want to go for. As most players play DPS rules, these potions are perhaps the most common and popular potion commodity on the PvE market and tend to be the go-to potions for whether you're going to, into a veteran trial or parsing on the dummy. Next up for number 4, we have the Detect Potions, primarily used for PvP situations where you have people using invisibility potions or being sneaky sneaky nightblades cloaking away into the shadows. The Detect Potion can come in many forms, including combining stealth detection by 20 meters for 15.7 seconds with gaining resources and buffs back. While not always in usage, it's definitely nice to have quick slotted when you need to go into Cyrodiil, Imperial City, and sometimes Battlegrounds to either finish chasing down people or killing a Nightblade or to see them coming. For number 3 on this list, we do have Tristat Potions, possibly the most versatile potion in the entirety of the game for any level of player for all levels of content, depending on your build setups as a DPS and healer, while also being the more favored potion to go typically as a PvE tank and in PvP well. It can also be a general potion to use to get all of your resources back, magicka, stamina, and health if need be, and is often cheaply available on the player-driven market regardless of platform and server. For number 2 on the list, we have Immovability Potions, which can come in many forms, such as granting resources back through magicka and stamina gain, weapon and spell critical rating along with damage, and of course, CC immunity for in a lot of time. There's a lot of combinations of Immovability Potions out there, so it's up to you whether you want critical rating, uh, spell or weapon damage, do you want health back or magicka back, do you want both, etc, etc. These immovability potions are often used in PvP scenarios. They've actually been banned from some dueling tournaments in the past, and will often allow greater flexibility in going on the offensive or prolonging your defensive maneuvers against your opponents as you are granted CC immunity, otherwise known as crowd control immunity. As demonstrated by this video, you will see that the normal CC immunity lasts for about 8 seconds. The extended CC immunity was very noticeable right after the CC immunity is gone. Last but not least, we have Heroism Potions, the most expensive potion in the game with a whopping 1 million gold price tag for 200 potions as of the posting of this video, at least on PC North America. Why is this potion so expensive? Well, because of the ingredients needed like Columbine, Dragon Room, and Dragon Blood, depending on the version you're going for, and depending on how sweaty you want to get with your DPS, or in some scenarios, tanking, the most useful this potion is like the Tristat potions, but instead of giving health, it gives you a source of ultimate generation through minor heroism while giving your stamina and magic back in its most powerful version, or either stamina or magic back in the cheaper versions, and just minor heroism in the cheapest version. This potion, despite being the most expensive, isn't always the best option to go with if you don't know when you should use it. 
For example, in PvE, sorcerers can't usually use heroism pods as an optimal potion, because their bars often look like this, meaning they have no source of major prophecy or major savagery for their critical rating to go up, and it's certainly not the best potion to use if you don't have a Dragonite in your group, using Aeneas weapons to give you major brutality and sorcery to boost your damage buffs that's missing from not using a weapon or spell power potion, we liked that from earlier in this video. However, when used in the right context with the right group, it can certainly be a slight DPS increase depending on fights or cut down time on the next trash pack due to your ultimate generation building up faster to the next ultimate cast like a meteor, destruction staff ultimate, a standard, and so forth, especially if the group decides to bolster that ultimate generation you have from the heroism bot with sets like Pillager's Prophet. And before Oaken Soul was nerfed, well, let's just say each person could have two Storm Atronachs up at the same time for a long time. In fact, this potion may be one of several reasons as to why Oaken Soul, the mythic item, got nerfed in ESO by the combat developers, at least for the PvE side. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the top 5 potions, at least in this video. What other potion do you think should have been in this video? There's a lot out there, as I said, and there's really interesting ones that were used in the past to some effect, a very effective effect, including speed potions, uh, vitality potions. What potion do you think is something players should know about nowadays as of 2022 and going into 2023? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to always have a good potion ready for those tough situations. Stay safe, have fun, and see you guys next time. Ordered the Among Us potion from the dark web. And supposedly, when you drink this Among Us potion at 3 a.m., you turn into the imposter from Among Us.